So how do we find equilibrium concentrations? This is something that we would like to know. What are the equilibrium concentrations? So we've looked at a couple different things here. We looked at, we, we calculate the equilibrium constant by measuring the equilibrium concentrations. Or we can calculate the equilibrium constant if we know the initial concentrations and one of the equilibrium concentrations. Well, what if it's something that's difficult to measure, but we actually know what the equilibrium constant is? Then we can find <coughs> the equilibrium concentrations without having to measure them. So there's, there's two types of problems that we'll see here. The first one is where we know what the equilibrium constant is, and we know all but one of the equilibrium concentrations. So then we just have to plug the known values into the equilibrium expression and solve for the missing piece, right? The other one, um, we've got the equilibrium constant and the initial concentrations, and we want to know what the equilibrium concentrations are. And this is where we're going to use ice tables. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> but I'm thinking the song in my head. Um, OK. So diatomic iodine decomposes at high temperature to form iodine atoms, according to this reaction. In an equilibrium mixture, the concentration of I2 is 0 0.10 molar. What's the equilibrium concentration of I? So this is. One of those two types of problems, it's not always obvious which one it is, never hurts to start by writing out the equilibrium constant expression. So for this reaction, Kc, we've got the products, so that's iodine atoms squared, divided by the iodine molecules, not squared. We've got the equilibrium constant. Um, we've got the equilibrium concentration for I2. We're only missing one thing, right? So we can, and it's kind of up to you whether you put the numbers in and then rearrange it or, or rearrange it first. I'm going to rearrange this first. We're trying to find I. And so I'm going to rearrange this equation. Um, I squared is going to equal the equilibrium constant times the concentration of the I2. And then I need to square root that. So the equilibrium concentration of I is the square root of Kc times I2. I know both those values, so I can put them in here. Uh, 0.011 and 0 0.10, oops, extra one, and square root of the whole thing. Zero, three, three. Does that number have a unit? Yeah, it does. This is a concentration, right? So the unit there is moles per liter molarity. Any questions? jumping around. Okay, here we go. So um, this is the second type, um, which is more common, of course, and more difficult. Um, this is where we have the initial concentrations, and we've got an equilibrium constant. We're trying to find the, the equilibrium concentrations. So we're going to set up a nice table with the initial concentrations. And then we're going to represent the changes in terms of x, because we don't know what the change is. Earlier, we knew what the change was because we knew what one of the final concentrations is. Here, we don't know what the change is, so we just call it x. So we figure out how that changes in terms of x. Then we add the initial and the change rows to get equilibrium concentrations in terms of x. We plug those into the equilibrium constant expression 
where we know the equilibrium constant, and then we solve for x. And this is where having a solver on your calculator and becoming good friends with it will make things easier. So let's do a simple example here. Again, with the a going to 2b. Um, here's the equilibrium constant is 0.33. Initial concentration of A is one molar. So here we have our ice table. The initial concentration for A is one. The initial concentration for B is zero. Then something's going to change. Well, we definitely know that the reactant concentration is gonna go down and the product concentration is gonna go up. It can't do anything else, right? So we'll say, well, this reactant is going to go down by x. If this changes by x, then that's going to increase by 2x because of this 2, right? I'm going to make twice as many moles of B as I destroy of A. So this is minus x, and that's plus 2x. Then I'm going to add these together. So I've got 1 minus x, so that's the equilibrium concentration for A, and I have 0 plus 2x, and that's the equilibrium concentration for B. You follow that? So then we take the equilibrium constant expression. So Kc is equal to the concentration of B squared divided by the concentration of A. So I'm going to plug in these equilibrium concentrations. They are in terms of x. So on top, I've got b, and b is 2x, and so that thing is squared. <coughs> and then on the bottom, I've got the quantity 1.0 minus x. And I know what Kc is. Kc is 0.33. So then this becomes an algebra problem. In my opinion, it's absolutely fine to take this and just plug it into the solver on your calculator. Um, some of these we can solve the old fashioned way by just, you know, combining terms and everything. Let's do that for this one. Um, so what I'm going to have is I'm going to have four x squared is equal to 0.33 minus 0.33x. And I end up with um, a quadratic, right? 4 squared plus 0.33x minus 0.33 equals 0. Wonderful, right? There's the quadratic equation that you can plug those terms into and solve. And I know that can be done. I don't remember how to do it. So I'm going to stick this into the solver on my calculator. Um, and so this is something that, you know, you're going to have to figure out how to do on your particular calculator. And I have posted some videos that I found. Um, I'll be talking through what I'm doing on the um, 36X Pro. So the num solve. That's what we're going to go for. So that's a second function. And then that'll give you something that looks like this. It'll give you two little squares with an equal sign. And what I want to do is I want to put my equation into that. Um, I can do it. I can actually do it like this if I want to. I can rearrange it. Um, on some calculators, you have to change it enough so that one side is equal to zero. So just be aware of that. Personally, I think any, any rearranging I do is an opportunity for me to screw it up. So I'm going to put this in to my solver. So I'm going to put this on one side and that on the other side. Um, this calculator has a button down towards the on switch, and it's got x, y, z, a, b, c, d, all those letters on it. That's my variable button. First time you press it, you get x, and you might as well just use x. So I'm going to do the quantity 2 times x squared. And that's divided by the quantity 1.0 
minus x, close parentheses. So that's on the left side. And I move the cursor over to the right side and I say, well, that's 0.33. And I press equals. And now it says enter and solve. And I'm just going to let it start with x equals 0. And I press enter again. And I wait. And it tells me that x is 0 0.24892505499. Much faster than doing it using the quadratic equation. So I'm going to just, uh, I think two safe phases, plenty here. So we'll call that 0.25. Always a good thing to ask yourself, is that a possible result for this situation? Because quadratics can, can sometimes yield two different answers. Um, is it possible that this x is actually a negative number? No, because if, if x was a negative number, then my product concentration would go below zero, which is not possible, right? And here I've got one minus x, so it's not possible for x to be larger than one. So there are parameters because of the reaction and the starting concentrations. So this falls into that realm of possibility. Um, if you're not sure if you did the solver right, you can plug this back in here and make sure that it comes out right. I trust the solver. So we're trying to find the equilibrium concentrations. So I got x is 0.25. Am I done? No. I'm going to plug x into those equilibrium expressions. So the concentration of A is 1 minus x. So that's 1.0 minus x, which is 0.25. So the concentration of that is 0.75 molar. And the concentration of B is 2 times x. So B is 2 times x, or 0 0.50 molar. So those are my results there. Any questions? Let, let's do one that's a little more interesting. So N2 plus O2 giving us 2 NO. There's our equilibrium constant. It says the reaction starts with only the product and no reactants. Find the equilibrium concentrations of all three things. So we need an ice table. So yeah, I also need to just pick a pen so I can write. Um, we've got reactants, or reactant, and we have product. I think it's, it's helpful to actually write the equation here with the coefficients so that you don't forget to look at them. So I've got initial concentrations. And what does it tell me? The N2O4 is OK, yeah. I accidentally went ahead to the next one, which is yeah. the reverse. <laughs> Stop me sooner, people. I'm like, wait a minute, that's not what I just read. Lost in the ether. Okay, let's let's start this again. There's a different, yeah. Mm. Okay, we've got N2 and O2. It was nitrogens and oxygens the same thing? No. Okay. So there's our reactants and products. And initially, um, it says we have no reactants, so those concentrations are zero. And you know, instead of writing a whole bunch of zeros. Um, we can just write zero. We understand that it's exactly zero, good enough. Um, the product is 0 0.0100. So then we need change and equilibrium. Now you can pick x 
and make things difficult for yourself, or you can pick X and make things easy for yourself. Because I could say that X is the change for one of these, or I could say that X is the change for this. If I say this changes by X, then these are going to have fractions. They're going to have to be half of X. So I'm going to say that X is the amount that N2 increases. So that's going to go um, up by X. Then the O2 is also going to go up by X. And the NO is going to go down by what? 2X. It's much easier if you choose your X in relation to something that has a coefficient of 1. Then you can just apply the coefficients where needed, and it is so much less thinking. So my equilibrium expressions here would be x, x, and 0 0.0100 0 .0 minus 2x. Okay. My equilibrium constant expression is uh, NO2, no, NO, NO squared divided by N2 and O2. So I've got the value of that, that's 0 0.055, and I can put these X things in there. So in the numerator I've got 0 0.0100 minus 2x quantity squared. And in the bottom, I've got x and x. So when I square this, I'm going to end up with an x squared term and an x term and I've got dividing down here, I'm going to have an x squared term. I'm going to end up with another one of the quadratic polynomials, right? So I'm just going to skip all of that messiness and go to my, my solver and plug this in. So I'm putting 0 0.055 on the one side. I've got the quantity 0 0.01 minus 2x. That quantity is squared divided by x squared. And solving, and came up with x is equal to 0 0.00. So x is equal to 0 0.00. Five, six. I'm going to write. We're probably having two or three significant figures here. Um, again, it's better to keep too many. Um, if I rounded this off to 0 0.006, that might not be a great idea. So this, this came out as a positive number, which is good because x has to be positive. What is the smallest? I'm sorry, what's the biggest number that x could be? Can this be less than zero, this equilibrium constant, I mean, equilibrium concentration? No. no. So, 0 0.0100 minus 2x, that must be greater than or equal to zero, right? So that tells me 0 0.0100 must be greater than or equal to 2x. So the largest x can be is 0 0.005. So x. But what is this one? It's bigger than that. If I plug that into my equations, my, my concentrations for the reactants are going to be fine, but I'm going to get a negative concentration for my product, right? Anybody out there? 
right? Okay. So what does that mean? That means that my calculator gave me a root that's not possible. There's, there's another root in there, and how do I find it? So I can solve again, and um, it's showing me x squared, and it's giving me this, this number, and I can just set that to 0 and tell it to solve again. The way it's solving this is, is by iteration. It takes a number, plugs it in there, and says, oh, that was too big. Let's make it smaller. And so it approaches the solution from either too high or too low. And so if you tell it to approach from the other direction, then you can often make it find you the other route. So I did it starting at 0. And now it's giving me 0.004475. Okay, that one's smaller than 0 0.005. That's kind of ugly. So this is the one that's possible. So then at equilibrium, the N2 concentration is equal to the O2 concentration. Both of those will be equal to 0 0.00, 0 0.005. We'll call that 448 molar. And the NO concentration will be equal to 0 0.0100 0 0 minus 2 times the x we just found. Point zero zero one zero five. Any questions? So these are two different roots for this quadratic polynomial. How did you find with the solver? With the solver. Yeah. So like if I have x squared is equal to 4, there's two possible values that x could be. x could be 2. x can also be negative 2, right? Negative 2 times negative 2 is also 4. How do we know which root is correct? Well, sometimes we can't tell, but sometimes we can find out that one of them, based on where that equation came from, is ridiculous. Like, I can't have a negative concentration. And so the first root that it came up with, this one, if I plug that in here, I'm going to get a negative concentration. And so that can't be correct. So then I have to get my solver to show me the other root. And that's something that I will have to work with you kind of one-on-one. -on -one. And there's some exercises on the worksheet we're going to do on Thursday that will help us understand that a little more. Any other questions? Okay, here's the other one that I tried to start earlier. Um, so N2O4 going to 2NO, there's equilibrium constant um, at 100 degrees, and it's saying the reaction mixture at 100 degrees. Um, we've only got the reactant. Find the concentrations at equilibrium. So again, we've got, we've got to set up an ice table. So initial concentrations, um, we've got N2O4 
0.0250, and we have none of this. And then we look at the change. The change is in terms of x. So N2O4 has a coefficient of 1, NO has a coefficient of 2. So I'm going to choose x to be related to this one because this has a coefficient of 1. This is my reactant. I have some of that. I have no product. This has to go down, right? So I'm going to lose that. I'm going to lose x. For every one of these that I lose, I gain two of those, right? So this is going to increase 2x. Everybody with me? Okay. So at equilibrium, I'm just going to take the initial and add the change to get what I've got at equilibrium. So this is going to be 0 0.0250 minus x, and this was going to be 2x. Write out the equilibrium constant expression. I've got NO2 squared divided by N2O4. I've got the value of K, 0 .0, no, 0.36. And so I'm going to plug in these X things. Um, oops. There's no 2 in here. I don't know where that came from. So the NO concentration is, I'm calling that 2x, and that's squared. That's divided by the N2O4 concentration, which is 0 0.0250 minus x. I have to figure out what x is. So again, I'm going to turn to the solver. I'm going to put 0.36 on one side. And then I've got the quantity 2 times x squared divided by the quantity 0 0.025 minus x. And it's telling me that x is 0 0.0204. So I have to ask myself, is that a possible solution? So you can do the greater than equal thing that we did earlier, or sometimes it's easier to just plug it in and see if you get ridiculous answers. So for N2O4, the concentration is 0 0.0250 minus x. Well, we've got a value for x now. 0 0.0204. So it's giving me 0 0.0046, and that would be moles per liter. The concentration of the product NO is equal to 2x. 2 times 0 0.0204 or 0 0.0408. Neither of those was negative, so things are okay. Any questions? Okay.